Happy Monday, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Today, we're talking about sexual assault and motive to fabricate. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Kenneth Ignacio was charged with a sexual assault, and at trial he argued that the complainant had essentially fabricated her story. In determining whether or not to believe the complainant or Mr. Ignacio about what had happened in the case, the judge looked to one of the factors being the absence of any evidence that the complainant had a motive to fabricate her story. Mr. Ignacio appealed his conviction, arguing that the absence of a motive to fabricate was not itself evidence that the story was not fabricated. The Court of Appeal dismissed his appeal, and he sought leave from the Supreme Court of Canada. And this case obviously raises very important issues, because a motive to fabricate a story against an individual may not always be readily apparent. After all, in the criminal trial process, an accused person is given disclosure of the evidence that's in the possession of the Crown. It's not given disclosure of the evidence that's in the possession of the complaining witness nor is it necessarily capable of being obtained. For example, if the complaining witness doesn't disclose something to Crown, Crown doesn't know that it exists to compel disclosure of it from the complaining witness to the defense, and so the evidence of a motive to fabricate is lost. The very famous case in Canada of the Gian Gomeshi scandal involved an allegation of a motive to fabricate the uh, allegations against Mr. Gomeshi. And so that evidence was only obtained because Mr. Gomeshi had kept certain communications that had occurred between the complainant and other complainants in the case. But if that evidence doesn't exist, and there's no evidence of a motive to fabricate, that doesn't necessarily mean that there hasn't been fabrication nor does it mean that there has been fabrication. But for a judge to conclude that the absence of evidence of a motive to fabricate somehow bolstered the credibility of a witness is something that the Supreme Court of Canada should get into because of the limitations on what can be disclosed to the defense and the limitations on what defense is available to get. Remember too that this is all within the context of recent changes to the criminal code that have made it even more difficult to use evidence that you have that might put into question the motives of a complainant by allowing allowing the complainant to appear in pretrial applications to oppose the admission of that evidence at the trial proper. When such strict limitations are placed on your ability to even adduce evidence to show a motive to fabricate, then isn't it more important to not consider the absence of, an evidence, of evidence of a motive to fabricate as something that weighs in favor of the credibility of a complaining witness as opposed to just being a neutral factor at the trial? The Supreme Court of Canada just left this as a tangled mess that lower courts have to sort out that undoubtedly will lead to wrongful convictions and potentially could lead to circumstances where people who should have been convicted are acquitted on the basis of confusing reasoning, uh, looking at, at case authorities that complicate the prosecution of sexual assault cases when really this should be simplified. And the Supreme Court of Canada has a role to play in the simplification of the prosecution of these cases so that the defense and the Crown and the complaining witnesses all know what to expect in these trials. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, the Supreme Court of Canada missed an opportunity here to deal with these problems, to deal with the issue of, of the complexity of disclosure and adducing evidence and putting the truth before the court in sexual assault cases. And it's going to take another case where somebody is trying to allege a fabrication but has no motive to, or has no evidence of a motive to support that in order for the Supreme Court of Canada to have another opportunity to hear that. And that's just not fair to all the parties involved. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law Corporation. Thank you to Brazen Bull Creative for putting together these videos. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends.